Hello and welcome to the video. This is my overview and review of something that's just been released today. This is the B25 from Speedy Bee. Now I've done quite a few videos on Speedy Bee over the past seven, eight, maybe more years now. Originally starting off manufacturing lots of cute little gadgets. If you remember them, I still have my Speedy Bee adapter on my bench actually, to plug into stuff to change settings remotely using my phone. Uh, but then Speedy Bee got into things like flight controllers. I think I remember the first one I had in here was about six years ago that had Wi-Fi or Bluetooth capability built in. So you could use that fantastic little app to change things and mess around with your settings. And they've continued to impress me. I really like their fixed wing flight controllers. Things like the F405 wing and the F405 wing mini. I haven't actually bought any Matek wing flight controllers since those came out. They're only about £36 and offer a spectacular bang for the book. And also their flight control stacks I really like as well. Their multi-rotor flight controller stack and ESCs as well as their all-in-ones and the frames that they produce are actually really good too. In fact I like them so much I actually used them last time in my quadcopter for beginning of the series that I did about this time a year ago. Now this is their brand new quad that they've just released today. Again, this is the B25 uh, designed with one of their new all-in-one flight controllers stuck here in the inside with room at the front for a HDFPV system and lots of different support for things like Crossfire, Express LRS and other pieces too. There's even room at the back for a GPS. So there's an awful lot of really cool stuff in a relatively small package. So I thought as it's been released today, I finally talk about it, let me take you through some of the specs, talk through some of the cute stuff and show you some really cute stuff like the Meteor strip, the Meteor 2 in fact LED strip that goes around the outside of this little B25. So while I unbox it let me go through some of the headlines. There's quite a lot of stuff to cover for such a relatively small quad. The frame itself is actually made for some kind of injection molded plastic that's kind of a smoky effect and I guess it has to be in order for you to be able to see those beautiful LEDs around the outside but it's also very handy to see what's going on inside too. Now there is a slightly modular design to it. The camera and VTX cage that goes at the front is very easy to handle because it comes off. The basic one is made of that insane injection molded smoky effect plastic. However, there is kind of an upgrade which gives you two side plates which I'm going to use on here. And in fact, the views you've already had of it are actually using those side plates. But I need to use those side plates because unfortunately it's kind of designed just around the DJI uh, systems for the HD stuff. There's no real thought put in here from what I can see for wax nail or things like HD zero pilots, but we'll get back to that a bit later in the video. You can get this under 249 grams if that's important to you and it makes any difference to the regulations and legislation around where you live and fly. You do have to be a little bit careful with your battery choice as this thing weighs about 165 grams as I've got it here with the aluminium cage at the front and my walks down system in it. So I don't have a lot of wiggle room to get a battery on there as well and it's going to run on 4S. There is nice soft mounting for the camera. That's a pretty standard thing in the frames that Speedy Bee do. That's very handy when you're running HD, particularly if you're going to try it in 4K. The flight controller in the middle of this is a brand new F405 all-in-one flight controller. I'm hoping to be able to do a video soon about another one that's coming out as well. The flight controllers that Speedy Bee are making, they've had a couple of issues in the past, but they really seem to have got to grips with that now. And it has all the cool stuff, including the ability to run stuff like the Meteor LED strips. The power combo was 1404 motors. Um, quite powerful. We'll do a flight video in a moment. I'll show you how what it looks like. It's hovering at about a quarter throttle so there's lots of room in here if you wanted to add an extra little bit of weight mine is flying at just over 250 grams the cages at the front are all designed around the o3 air unit or the vista or the run cam link it's so all the dgi versions of stuff now i tried to get walksnell unit into the plastic version and it just wouldn't work so i ended up having to kind of can that whole thing Luckily, I have the Pro Upgrade Kit here as well, which is those aluminium side plates, and that was perfect. That allowed me a little bit more wiggle room to put the walk snail unit in. 
Room at the back for a GPS, compatible with the small GPSs though, the kind of the size is below about a 181. Uh, it would be nice if all of them came with that. Having some kind of emergency return to home feature in the beta flight setup from the factory would be great. Obviously you have the app control using the app because surprise surprise the flight controller has all of that goodness in it. Meteor LEDs in here and although the Meteor LEDs sometimes can be seen as a little bit of a additional current drain that you don't need. The Meteor LEDs this time are actually being used to indicate whether it's ready to arm, the arm status, whether it's in fail safe and also to help you recover the model as well with kind of a strobe effect. Battery you're going to need is 650 milliamp hours to 1100 milliamp hours. I'm flying mine with one of these batteries here. This is one of the Lava 850 milliamp hours, and this is taking just over the 250 gram limit. Flight times they reckon can vary for anything from 5 to 10 minutes depending on the size of the battery. But so let me give you an idea of what I'm actually getting from the battery that I'm playing with here. Speaking of batteries, there are two ways that you can actually mount the battery on the top. You can mount it in this particular space. There is a massive amount of room here, so that's the reason that I've gone with this Lava 850 battery. Just fits in the gap between the back of the cage for the VTX and also gives you just enough room to get to the XT30. However, by undoing these two straps and rotating them, you can actually mount the battery side saddle and I think that's a fantastic idea that's a really cute piece of design from Speedy Bee. They have also offered lots of 3D printable parts if you want to add and bling yours up. Love the fact that all that stuff is available from them directly. So if you break a part and you have a 3D printer, then you can print replacements. I absolutely love to see that and I wish more manufacturers offered that. In terms of the specs, well, it doesn't come with a VTX, although it's compatible with the L3 Air unit and everything on here is molded around that. Unfortunately, that's not great for those of us that don't fly L3 Air units primarily. Frame is the Speedy B25 standard version that I've got here. Wheelbase 120 millimeters. Main controller is an SCM32 F405. ESCs in here are 35 bit, 8 bit ESCs running Blue J firmware. Nice to see that in here. Motors are 1404 V2, 4600 KV units. Has Bluetooth on here and the Meteor LED strip with 88 individual LEDs. Black box is 8 meg. Propellers are HQ Prop DT63 millimeter three blades. Battery connector is XT30. It very nicely lists the maximum supported battery size on the website. So vertical 64 by 31 by 40 or horizontal 75 by 31 by 40. And again, the battery to recommend is anything from 650 to 1100 milliamp hours, although you're going to have to go to the lower end of that if you want to squeak under 250 grams. So let's plug it into Beta Flight and have a quick look using the port at the back. Nice thing to see for this review unit that I've got here. There is something in the data flash, so it's definitely been tested before it was shipped. Everything looks nice and smooth and working beautifully on the desk. Let's make sure that it's in expert mode. It is ports look like this. UART 1 is set for MSP, so is UART 3. That's actually being used for the VTX, the MSP display port stuff. Um, it is working great with the walk now set up as I've swapped it out here. Serial receiver is set for UART 6. I've got mine here with CRSF. Configuration. Now this is an F405 based processor. So 8K gyro, 4K pig loop is running it reasonably hard. CPU load is about 48%. That still should be fine in flight. Power and battery is set to this. Fail safe is set to drop. Sadly, as I said, it isn't coming with a GPS pre-installed. Not sure which UART that's plugged into, but that would have been nice. PID tuning is set like this. Uh, dump a diff down below if you're interested. You want to see how it's all set up. They seem to do a pretty good job. Interestingly, no expo on the controls. Receiver is set for CRSF. Telemetry is turned off. Mode set pretty well too. I've tweaked a couple of things around here, but this is reasonably standard stuff. Most people would have the modes on auxiliary too. So you might want to come in here and have a bit of a tweak of stuff. Speaking of tweaks, OSD, obviously you're going to want to come in here and move things around. Uh, interestingly, it's not set uh, for, for HD, it's set for auto. I've just tweaked a couple of things and dragged it around for the flying in here. So again, dump and diff below if you want to get into the weeds.
I think it's worthwhile very quickly showing you these Meteor lights in effect. I'll connect to it with the app on the phone and then show you some of the modes that you can set. So it's configurable from the phone. But the really nice thing is that what you can do is by default in the modes tab, there is the usual kind of user one, which is used to turn the LEDs on and off. So you can disable them while you're flying if you want to conserve power and also make it a little bit less obvious in low light conditions. But once you've got them on, you can see here that as you cycle through, you can see all the different effects. However, when you're flying, you'll notice that the LEDs are actually being used by default to show you the status of the craft, whether it's ready to arm, whether it's armed, disarmed, whether or not you're in return to home. There's lots of really interesting bits of information coming from those LEDs, and they actually look pretty cool. So talking about how it is when it flies, let's do that next. Hover point on this little thing is just about quarter throttle. So that's about minus 41 in HTX. The LEDs act as great status indicators, letting you know when it's ready to arm, when it is armed, and when it's flying around. Pressing that button while it's in flight will cycle through the different features so that you don't have to be in range. You can turn it on using the user one settings in the modes. Noise levels are as expected. Not too loud, but you'll be heard flying this in a quiet field from about 60 feet away. But up further away from that, if there's any kind of wind or noise around at all, you will lose it in that background noise. The tune is very nice, really set up for very smooth cinematic flying. This is super easy to fly, very buttery smooth, and get really beautiful shots from the HD system that you've got stuck in the nose. Flight time, I'm getting anywhere between six to eight minutes out of my 850 milliamp hour battery, depending on how hard I fly it. It's very easy to get shorter flight times if you aren't being as aggressive. My average throttle on most of my flights is being reported by beta flight at the end, about 30% throttle. So there's way more power in here if you wanted to try and do a little bit of acrobatic stuff or add a little bit more weight, even stick an action camera in the front. This is an incredibly fun little thing to fly. Despite its relatively small size and relatively lightweight, it doesn't feel like you're compromising much. You get all the things you want with not a lot of this stuff either, but there is still room here for a GPS. Now, there are lots of bind and fly, ready to fly quads in this design. This represents a bit of a departure from the other Speedy B frames that I've had in here to look at. Things like the Mario and the Master 5. The usual, it's all configurable from the Speedy B app. I like the fact that they've included screwdrivers in the kit. Speedy B tends to be a bit of an embarrassment to other vendors because they give you all of the cables and bits that you need in the box. I hope they continue to do that because it makes it easier for those people who are starting out who don't have all the stuff in a drawer by the side of their build table. I do quite like the smoked clear plastic frame it does appear to be holding up to the bounces around the fields that's been getting while I've been playing it here and I really like the removable camera cage idea which allows you to separate from the chassis and then to install all of your FPV equipment in here and then just kind of bolt it into place with four screws I like the fact that there is that compact GPS in the rear um, hopefully that gets shipped as a more standard thing having the return to home oh dear switch would be very handy in this and i do like the fact that there was lots of those kind of labels for newbies at the beginning to make sure that you don't accidentally do something that you'll regret and that integrated led ring although you can't really see it in bright sunlight once it's a little bit further away from you is incredible in lower light winter and dusk flying so as you're probably guessing, I'm actually a fan of this. I think this is a really well-made quad by Speedy Bee. I like the build quality and the parts they've used. I like the fact that they've made it available to download 3D printable parts and replacements. I like the compact frame design and I like that smoked plastic setup. It seems to be surviving very well and it actually looks a little bit different from lots of the other carbon fiber things that I get in. I do love the Meteor LED version 2 around the prop guards. They do look amazing at dusk. It's also handy for finding it in the grass or in the canopy of a tree if you accidentally get a little bit too close and get hung up and I also like the ability to mount the battery side saddle by rotating those two clips that's a really good idea I wish more people did that and I also like how it flies the tuner set about the box is pretty fantastic 
Overall, I'm impressed with this. There's only a couple of things that I would draw your attention to. The main one, of course, is that this is supplied without an O3A unit installed, but is designed around an O3A unit, although you can fit one of the previous versions of the DJI system in here as well. If you're not going to be supplying an A unit with it, why not make it universal? So you can have HD0, Walksnail, or the DJI stuff. Speedy B, don't fall for it. See the video from September. The O3 unit doesn't represent the majority of the people flying HD in the hobby. There are lots of others out there, and you are limiting your market, Speedy B, by not making these things universal. Stop listening to your DJI rep. However, if you get hold of the metal cage as I've done here, there is a little bit more room if you want to put things in. And as you can see, I've managed to squeeze in one of the V1 Walksnail units in here without too much trouble. And basic little bits of adaptation. It would have also been handy for them to supply other VTX cables too, so you can make your own ends off. The one that's applied is surprise prize, designed to plug into the back of the O3 unit. However, the reason that I've used this particular walk snail unit is that it also fits the walk snail and the pinouts are the same too. So this is a beautifully designed compact quad, perfect for flying in dark conditions. And despite the fact it can get under 250 grams, it feels like that was almost by accident. You don't sacrifice a lot in here, and I'm sure if they were really designing it to be a sub 250 gram model, they would have made some slightly different choices in terms of some of the plastics to continue to lighten it up. But if you want to, you can squeak it under 250 grams. However, I would put a slightly bigger battery on here, stick a GPS in the back, probably fly it at about 280, 290 grams, and have a fantastic, versatile, great all-round cinematic flyer that is great not only in the daytime, but also a lot of fun to fly at dusk too. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.